Hi guys, welcome to a new vlog. Something a little bit different for you today. It's been a long time since we sat here and done a talk video, yeah. isn't it? So, we are just going to go over the pros and cons of living in a lodge. We get messaged all the time for people that are looking for similar. They want to know tips and ideas of how we started our journey into living in a lodge. So if you've seen our previous lodge, you will know the, the stories that we've told in the past. And for any new lodgers, we'll, we'll briefly recap. Yeah. We spent 10 years running our business, didn't have any holidays whatsoever. We'd saved up all this holiday money. This is when we lived in our home. That House, we got yeah. Of, yeah. We decided to book a whole season's weekend down the East Coast. Came with Sazzle and Monkey, didn't we? Marsha wasn't even born. And we decided that it was a really nice weekend and we thought, hmm, well maybe if we can't go abroad, maybe this is something we could do instead. If come we own something, we could come here yeah. like weekends. It was just a caravan we went into. And the, just by coincidence, I think the previous, the next week or something like that, my mum and sister were going away um, for the weekend. In the same area? Yeah, in the same area. So we said, well, let's tag along. So we did. And go. So we, we came, uh, we had the first night, we had pizza and salad, I always remember, with my mum and my sister. It was my mum's birthday the day after. And we got up, we gave her presents. She had um, a little bit of stomach ache. We had a list of parks we were going to visit, so we yeah. kind of left them on their own. Yeah, uh, so then we got a call. We were actually stood in a lodge on this park. Our first lodge. We were looking around it and we got a call and it was my sister and she said, we, I've just had to call the ambulance. My mum's got to go to hospital because her stomach's got really bad. So we were like, oh, right, we need to go. Turned out to be appendicitis. Yeah. So when we were following the ambulance, the ambulance pulled up trying to get her into a local hospital and um, we were parked up waiting for about 15-20 minutes, weren't we? And we both texted each other and said, sod it, we could be dead tomorrow, every day is best, let's just buy the, yeah. the first lodge that we had. It was a very unexpected thing, I'm not even sure we would have bought a lodge if that hadn't happened. Probably um, not. We looked at the first lodge and we, we liked it. Immediately loved it. Then we were like, mm, should we, shouldn't we? And then we got that call and we both, I was sat in the back of the ambulance. For those of you who have heard this story before, we're just going to go over it quickly. I was sat in the back of the ambulance thinking, friggin' hell, look what's just happened in like five minutes. And look how life can turn around in five minutes. So we were like, let's just do it. We work so hard, we work so long, and we just basically didn't do anything. So, long story short, we bought a lodge. We moved in in October, was it? September? September for your birthday, wasn't it? Um, it was my 40th birthday, I was 39 when we bought the lodge. And it was kind Long of time a present for me, or for so Nick said. And we moved in for my 40th birthday. We weren't vlogging, so there's no vlogs of our first lodge, unfortunately. I wish we had vlogged. When we came around to look at that lodge, we actually drove around on this street that we're on now. And we actually commented and said, oh, wouldn't it be nice to, to have a, a big lodge like this where we yeah. could spend more time? And we're like, but that'll never happen. Never thought anything <laughs> of it. And then six months later, Lee had his spleen injury. So we enjoyed so, that first lodge for, yeah. for, for over for, Christmas, for wasn't six it? Six months, yeah. And it was cozy, and it was small, mm -hmm. and it was it was just nice. And then we were at home doing the house up, um, and I just had a, a an pain unusual pain one night. Again, long story short, because a lot of people have heard this, I ended up in hospital with a, a cyst on my spleen, Which and burst. Um, at, at the time, the doctors were saying, I'm well, going to have to have my spleen out, I would be on antibiotics for the rest of my life, and basically my life was about to change slightly. Long story short, it didn't, I didn't have to have my spleen out. We were in, well, we were in hospital and I said, right, this is the every day's best again now. Yeah. Um, when we go back to the lodge, we're going to get the keys, because these were all empty at the time, we're going to get the keys for, for all, for all the, the ones on this road that were vacant, and we spent a weekend going from this one to the next one to the next one, all up and down the road, didn't we? And then on the Sunday, we said, right, we kind of knew we, we knew straight we knew away. this one that we liked, but um, we were like, will we use it enough and blah, 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 we'll come on to the pros and cons and stuff afterwards. So we bought this lodge, we moved in, and we became the lodge guys. Yeah. We started um, vlogging about a week later, didn't we? Uh, no, it was it a was long time after that, it wasn't No, it wasn't. Um, we were still, you still had your spleen injury because we were visiting your dad in hospital yeah, as well. Yeah, but it, it, was, a few, just it was a couple of months at least before I decided to, to vlog. And the story of why I start, we started vlogging was, I had a YouTube channel which I used to run from our garage, garage. conversion at home for kids, TV and stuff. It's still out there, it's called Toy, stuff. Toy Fun TV. I don't do anything on it anymore. We got here, I didn't have the room to do that kind of stuff, but I, I got into YouTube and I really enjoyed it. So I started vlogging. Nick were like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, um, I was. <laughs> for the first year I was. Um, but then he finally got into it. And, and it was all done on a mobile phone. It was very cheesy. And if you look at our early vlogs, you'll see exactly why. Everybody feels central. sick. Everybody <laughs> feels sick watching it because there's no image stabilization. 
So that but things progressed then yeah. and um, we spent more and more time here. We knew when we started our business that it was on a limited shelf life. When we started it, we knew it wouldn't last forever. And we knew we could we could almost predict at the point where we would either have to close it or basically change direction. Uh, and that happened to be January 20 when it was the point where we, we basically it wasn't wasn't worth doing it anymore, was it? No. We had been struggling with the business for six months plus. Um, there was lots of competitors. Everybody's undercutting each it other. It was driving margins we were down. Making pennies on on the stuff. One day we'll probably do a video about what that business was fully, because I'm sure a, a few would, would be interested in that. But there is a great story on on how yeah, it come to fruition. Obviously, but, um, we had lots of staff to consider, and that is why we ran for six to eight months at a, a, a loss. Because we're well, not at a loss. We were just very, very, very tiny profits, like nineteen pounds in one <laughs> yeah. quarter. I think we made, so, so it was literally not making any money at all. We 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 ran it for as long as we could, mainly because of the staff. We didn't want to let them down. They they'd worked for us for a long time. But we're getting off the subject now. So we did get rid of the business because it, it would have been starting to yeah. have. Our and we had other things bubbling away in the background, yeah. which we focus on now. Right. So basically, what are the pros and cons of buying a lodge? So we've basically broken these down into things that you need to consider. Uh, things that we consider pros, things that other people will consider probably cons. Yeah. And a lot um, of the things that we've learned in the years after living here, which we wish we'd mistakes. known about yeah. before. So the first thing is, obviously, if you're going to buy a lodge, you've got to find somewhere to house it. So you need to find a park yeah. uh, or your own private land. If you've got private land, you can pop a lodge on your own private that land. Would be the ideal um, situation. That would be perfect for us. We found this particular place because of its views and it was the prime location for us. We looked at a few. I would say the the most important thing is just to get them down and just go and look. Yeah. Get right. Well, You'll had, know the one when you find it. I had a notepad. I wrote all the local caravan and lodge parks down and we just had one day, which was a Saturday when we, we, we went through them all, didn't we? We said, right, we'll go one from the top to the bottom. We only actually managed to get to two before yeah. my mum called and luckily the second one was the one that we uh, liked. So the other things to consider are obviously, there are obviously a long-term costs of owning a lodge, such things as pitch fees. So your pitch fees will vary depending on your view, your positioning, uh, the amount of other people around you, the amount size of space, of yeah, the size of your lodge, the amount of space on your plot and things like that. And don't forget, you've got to pay those fees whether you use your lodge or not. Yeah. So you've got to decide how much time you're going to spend here so time versus cost you've got to you've got to work out whether it's affordable whether you're going to get your use out of it we actually bought this on the hopes of just using it at weekends and then the whole situation with work changed and we became sort of four days a week here mm -hmm. five days the other thing to consider is you pay a gas and electricity bill just like you do at home again whether you're here or not however the benefit of that is you can't be in two places at once so if you've got a home you're not using gas and electricity yeah. you're using it here instead so yeah. that kind of weighs up however Park, gas and water and electric tends to be a little bit more expensive than you can get at, at your home yeah, and you can't always shop around yeah. when you live on a, on a park. You can't go onto to U-Switch or whatever it is and find the cheapest no. rates. You've got to go through the park, which is usually inflated. Yeah. You also have to pay things like business rates and sewage and things like that. That's part of your fees. So for us, typically, I think last year or the year before, our total utilities costs, including all that, was about £800 for the year, plus our pitch fees. But within that is one of the pros, the fact that the park then look after everything for you. They do all your gardens, they provide your facilities, your pubs and things like that. Obviously, you've got to pay for your drinks, but there are areas different facilities on different parks you can fish you can golf you can do whatever is interest to you we have no interest in any of that we bought it purely for the fact that we wanted a home away from home the positioning of your lodge is another consideration that you need to take as well we bought this in hindsight and didn't realize that we are in the worst wind spot for the whole park basically we've got um, what we think is the best view best view but the coldest but the, the worst for the wind the wind comes from the sea straight over all the um infrastructure over the other over side there and blow straight onto the decking, which, as you've seen, is a beautiful decking, but we hardly ever get to use it because it's always freezing. Even in summer, it's really, really cold. Yeah. So, and that's one of the reasons why we don't have a hot tub. A lot of people say, why don't you have a hot tub? It's because it's freezing out there. Yeah, we would never use it. The other thing that, uh, that is to consider is the travel distance from your home as well. We think, we would like, we'd ideally like it to have been an hour. Yeah. It's actually two hours for us, so yeah. it is a long way to just nip back and forth. There are some people, our neighbours, that actually live about five miles away mm. and just have this as like a, a holiday home break type thing. For us, when we come, we come for long periods. Again, I probably wouldn't have not bought here, but for me, it is one of the cons. Obviously, my family are, are an hour and a half away. Yeah. Uh, it's just a little bit too far just to say, come over for the day and 
you know, you've got to think about, oh, it's, it is an hour and a half away, so it's a full... It's three hours of driving, yeah. that's minimum. I would have liked it to be in about an hour. An hour yeah. would have been perfect. So the next thing to consider is basically, can you make any income from your um, from your lodge or your, your, your unit? On this park, particularly, there's no option to do rentals or anything like that, no holiday makers. So Which, for us, that's ideal, because yes. your neighbours are always the same neighbours that you see. Some parks, you would actually have holiday makers in, in like, your next door neighbour and things like that. So that was one of the, one of the positives for that us. That was one of the reasons why we bought here because yeah. um, we we didn't want holiday people that was around with holiday yeah. people but we didn't want to be on a holiday park yeah um, a lot of people are and that's that's great and you can rent your your lodge or your caravan out we can't and that's one of the and things wouldn't if we could no you can't assume that a lodge or a caravan is a is an investment it's not an investment. You will lose money on it. It's very much like a car when you drive it off the forecourt. You lose money the second that you've, you've basically exchanged your contracts. Yeah. You're buying a lifestyle, you're not buying property. We knew that when we bought and we went in there fully open to that. We didn't, yeah. we, we, it's we weren't. It's not an investment. No. You'll never make the same money back on it. You will lose. I think each time you sell it, you've got to pay commission of 10% or something like that. It's, if, if you want to invest in something, then get bricks and mortar. Yeah, get bricks and mortar. Get an apartment, get a house somewhere. I mean, we could have had that option. It's not something that we thought about at the time. We could have bought a house over here, yeah. but we wouldn't have then had the community that we yeah, got the, with The it. community for us and the lifestyle is what we bought, not the lodge. But the, it just happened to be that we bought the lodge and the lifestyle came, came with it. And what we mean by community is you've seen Socializing. The, the, the lounge when we just go around for coffee and we usually end up bumping into friends over there we've made lots of friends on the lodge park yeah more um, so we lived at our we lived at our old house and we lived there for 15 years something like that we never made friends with anybody no. there and then you may have seen that some of our neighbors who live straight opposite us was bought on the same park and we're like best friends, friends with them now we, we go around for drinks we go out for it's picnics. the kind of environment that forces socialization yeah. it's not something that you that you're here to kind of we've not spoken to them for 12 years apart from hello yeah. and then now we're best friends that they're on here so yeah, if you do want that kind of community lifestyle, a really nice community, then Lodge Park's are great for that. Yeah. So our plan for last year was we were gonna downsize our house and rent it out to generate, to generate some income and then go traveling and just basically have a postal address somewhere where we could receive mail. And then obviously COVID hit and all that changed and we ended up buying an apartment and, and getting rid of the house. And if you're new here, just because you want to see what it's like living in a lodge, go check out our videos from last year when we had to leave the lodge. We had 24 hours to leave the lodge uh, we had to pack up all our things and go back home. The timing was impeccable timing. It yeah. was just uh, just so ironic that we just literally cleared our house, sold everything off, put a lot of the stuff in storage, and then bang, we had this happen and we had no furniture. And like, like Lee said, go back and have a look at those videos from the beginning of lockdown one. Yeah. Right, getting on to the pros and the cons. We will do a bit of a lodge tour as well and show you around and the things that we've changed since we've been here. The first con is the fact that you can't have any post or any parcels delivered here because you don't have a physical address. It's kind of a con and a pro, the fact that um, it stops us buying so much from Amazon. Yeah, although we just use Amazon lockers, so that's, <laughs> we've got around it that way, but we don't have any mail here or anything like that. The next con is, depending on which lodge or caravan you buy, there's not much storage. We have zero storage. Yeah. Well, we have a, we have a cupboard there. We have, you've under got to be beds. creative under the beds as storage and... Um, we have a shed. It. We have a shed. We have one shed outside. Yeah. You can have more sheds outside, but then it kind of starts ruining the look of your garden and yep. things like that. Uh, the next one is you're limited on the utilities that you have. So you can't have Virgin Broadband, you can't have BT phone lines or anything like that. Our internet is provided by the park, which is a fibre broadband, but it's actually captured at, at a slow speed. And as you've seen our, our previous logs, you know we've had internet problems multiple times. Yeah. At um, the apartment we have 70 meg, here we have... we've. We've had two meg in the last couple of weeks. It's been a nightmare for yeah. even watching Netflix or anything like yeah. that. Now we've got 20 meg, which is ample and is enough to be able to upload the vlogs and things like that. A next con is just a con for this particular lodge is the poor position of the bathroom. The bathroom is there. Straight into the kitchen. Straight into the kitchen. So if you've got guests coming around and they want to go to the Louvre number two, and you're and cooking, you're cooking um, the two don't mix very well. <laughs> so it's just a poor position, but obviously that's just for our That's, lodge. yeah, specific um, to this. It's, it's just, just look at things like that when you're going around things and, you know, we can live with it and it do, it's just a, a con for us, you yeah. know. The other thing as well is that some parks have closed down periods. Some parks you that you can stay on it 365 days a year. Fortunately, we can't. We can only use it for 11 months, which is fine out. because we can go on holiday on that yeah, closure month January. or we can go back to the apartment. Although the last year, it's kind of not really mattered because it's been mm -hmm. closed anyway. So do look at that because there are some parks that have like five months closed down, yeah. which is great if you think, I'm not going to use it for the winter, but the winter is one of the times that we really love. Like now, it's 
it's cozy. It down, it's cozy. It's cozy. Mm -hmm. pine, pine forestry and things like that. That's what sold it to us because the yeah. day we came and looked, it was actually raining, wasn't it? And we were like, oh, mm -hmm. this is like we've been in Canada or yeah. something like that. The other thing to consider now, obviously, because of the last year and the pandemic, is some lodge parks are residential parks, so you can actually live there. Yeah. Had we known about the pandemic four years ago, it may have been something we would have considered looking at. Yeah. We've never looked around a residential park, so we don't know what they look like. Residentials tend to be more brick-based mm -hmm. and residential homes, and they tend to be more over 55s. So in a few years' time, maybe there, yeah. you can qualify. <laughs> but I imagine those people who live in those houses didn't have to leave for lockdown. They didn't, lockdown because, they, didn't. because they have an address, they pay council yeah. tax and things like that. One day it may be something that we look at, I don't know, um, because it would be nice to just have the one home and not have to look after two homes yeah. and the expense, but for now that's not, not where we are. Yeah. So that's, that's the final con, so um, the pros are, when we bought it the entire place was interior design so we didn't have to think about decor, colour, matching things, we walked in, everything that you see in our vlogs, apart from a couple of lamps and a couple of bits and bats around was Which actually was here one. when we walked in. So everything, including like the signs on the shelf, the pictures on the wall, they were all here. We had to think about nothing and it was one of, it was like buying a new house but not having to decorate it. It was like moving into a show home. Yes, it was effectively a show home. Yeah. We, it came with all the bits and bats. And so it, that was a positive for us. A lot of caravans are like that, aren't they? Especially on this side, because when you go and look around them, they're all done up, unless it's the second hand one. Yeah, you get, they put dress kits in it, but our yeah. dress kits was designed and made for this particular colour scheme. So we kept everything that was there, so including the pot on the stove that everybody sort of talks about, that came with the lodge. <laughs> and it's still in the same place as what it was when we actually got the lodge. The next pro for us is the view. Obviously, again, yeah. that's just unique to this particular plot. But obviously that gets reflected in pitch prices and things like that. So if you have a view that's obstructed, then you would expect that your pitch fees would be less. So you pay, you get what you pay for, basically. And it's the one thing that whenever we're away from the lodge, we get back and we just say, look at that view. Yeah. You can't beat it. Yeah. The second one is, uh, for us, the, one of the pros is the size. So this is actually a 55 by 20. So it's, ba it's basically big enough for two people to live in it without getting under each other's feet. Mm -hmm. It's basically got three bedrooms. There are other models on the on here, exactly the same as ours, that are exactly the same, but different layouts and things two like that. Two bedroom one. Yep. Our friends live in a two bedroom one of, of this particular lodge. It's very weird because when you go and look around, everything kind of looks the same, but also looks different. And that has pros and cons as well. Their, yep. their main bedroom has a humongous walk-in wardrobe, which is lovely, I'd love that. But we, we wanted have. the extra bedroom for when the kids come over. Yep. So you have seen the lodge, obviously, in all our videos, but um, we have done the lodge tour before, but it was a long time ago. So we thought we'd just show you around, show you some of the places that we don't vlog in. Yeah. Um, Apologies for people that, who basically may have seen this already, but um, there's a lot of people that subscribe that haven't yeah. watched our back catalogue. So we're going to show you around the lodge now. And we've just explain what it was like when we got it and what we've changed. We've tied it up. Right, so as you know, you come in the door and this is where you come into. So this, this is the is living room. room. Apologies for this mess, we've been obviously just filming this video. I'll stand further back so you can't see it. <laughs> this is usually um, where we do our uh, work and where we our meals. So this is unfortunately for us a con because we don't have a proper office, but we could at some point turn one of the bedrooms into an office. I will swing around the room while Lee's talking. Yeah, all this came with it, um, apart from the trinkets, we got a new picture, we got that stag, but the, the actual furniture came with the lodge. And you'll notice that it's actually very similar, if not identical, yeah. to the apartment. Yeah, so obviously the living room area. Got okay. the sofas, even the cushions came with the lodge. Yeah, all this came with the lodge, all this furniture, uh, most of the trinkets on there came with the lodge. We've added our own to it. We absolutely love this sofa. And yep. it is actually a sofa bed. This whole unit here comes out and makes a double bed. It's only been used once. Yeah, a couple of times, I think. Uh, my sister once used it. I think your mum used it. My mum, my mum used it. Uh, we obviously bought the TV. Yep, we put the lights around the window, just personal touches. Yeah. But the cushions, like I said, the cushions came with it. The picture on the wall, which we had to have redone because it was faded with the sun. This is Nick's favourite place. This is my pit. <laughs> This is the kitchen, and we just going to put some lights on so we you can see the what they call the runway. Runway lights, which are like a cool white, a low voltage cool white lights. Yeah, so this is perfect. I'm sure lots of you have an island when you're cooking. This is perfect for when you're cooking. I love guests. standing here. So we have guests sat over there while Nick's cooking, and we can you know, have a drink, 
have a chat. So we like the open plan. The downside is my head bangs that. It could just do with hiring up a, uh, maybe a couple of inch. Yeah. Um, all the appliances oh, are CDA. It's not like the best brand. Loads of storage, which is what we missed at the apartment. Lovely big fridge, which we like. Again, just moved in and it was all done for us. Yep. Uh, we've got this blackboard, which we are too OCD to ever use. No, we're never using that. We uh, hide the chalk when people come. I'd love to get one of those artists in here, I mean, that do proper chalk art and I don't know what it's Yeah, but what if you didn't like it? This is the bathroom, which we was in one of our cons, so obviously Nick's cooking there. This is the kitchen. And somebody says, right, I'm off for number two. And especially when they're having a bookshop poo and it, um, <laughs> you can hear it when you're cooking. So this is our main bathroom. A lovely freestanding bath. No shower, unfortunately, which is a bit of a con. It's got an over, shower, over bath shower. It's got that, but it hasn't got like a proper shower. Yeah, so. because the bath is freestanding, if you stood up and got a shower, it would go down the back and the front. So, so our friends and family, if they come and stay here, would say, do you want to go and have a shower in our um, en suite? Yeah. Which is fine, but which means we have to go make our bed so it looks presentable. The mirror on the wall is a, um, so if you've got your hands all soapy, you can turn it on and off. Love that. Pretty much why we got the same one at the apartment. Yeah. It's very similar down the corridor into our bedroom, which we've tied in. Yeah. So, there we go. This originally was a king, king size. size, but we like super king because obviously we're two six foot guys, so um, we uh, want to be as far away from each other as possible. So we had the, head, the headboard upgraded by the manufacturer, or we actually swapped it, and we put the other one in the back bedroom, which we'll tell you about when we get in there. That's our furniture in the bedroom. Again, for me, it's a con because there isn't enough storage for all our clothes. And it matches the apartment. Yep. TV on the wall, which we put in ourselves, that didn't come with it. Uh, a big freestanding, well not freestanding, but a full length mirror. En suite, which is again, something that we absolutely love, so that when we've got guests, Love the walk-in shower. We missed that when we were at the apartment. Yeah. Hopefully we're going to get that um, when we get back and get the bathroom done. Yeah, we'll start showing the storage later. Then we can show you what we mean about storage. Um, so this is... There's the Kazi. Yeah. Nice full-length towel radiator. And there we go. We've got one of those for the apartment. It's yep. coming back with us tomorrow. What we call the first guest bedroom or the main guest bedroom. Now this room is the one that's had the biggest upgrade. Yeah. When we bought the lodge, this was actually two single beds, which was basically a bit awkward when couples were coming and staying as we're having to sleep in singles. So we took this bed, which was actually in the other room, and put it in here and took the headboards up and swapped the headboards. We've actually got vlogs showing you all that thing that we did. Yeah. The same wardrobe in here. So that's fine for um, guests. Again, TV. A uh, little radiator shelf to stop the heat from damaging it. And the third bedroom, which we call the kids' bedroom, because this is where the kids sleep. So or this this configuration, bedroom. this configuration was actually in the back bedroom. Um, exactly the same, but um, it didn't really make sense to have like four single beds. No. One day, this may change into an office. That is my dream, one day. Maybe we'll get like adult bunk beds there and an office there. I don't know. It would have to go with the decor. You'd have to convince me. Yeah. So the, there was a mirror on the wall there, which we've actually got over at the apartment, which we've not put up yet, and um, we've replaced it with a TV for where when the kids are in, it keeps them quiet in bed. Yeah, obviously the two bedrooms haven't been used since before the pandemic. The last people to sleep here were the kids and my sister. And that was at Christmas, time. January, nine, Christmas 19? Yeah, they came over in February. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So lots of space in this lodge for guests, which is great. Yep. Right, show us the storage. Yes, the storage. I didn't show the storage because I wanted to show you separately. Right. So we have the beds, obviously, and underneath the beds, Nick cut out the underneath of the beds so we can stuff things underneath. Right, so back into the ensuite. So this is where the boiler is. It's a yeah. combi boiler. This is all where the internet comes in and things like that. That's all the like the utility cupboard. And um, that is the only storage that we've got. Well, no, not well, quite. We also have this cupboard here as you come in. So that's our storage for shoes and coats. Uh, Nick put that shelf in so we could have the printer uh, up there. And uh, paperwork yeah. that we've got up there coats, shoes, we've got the little hoover that we brought from the apartment in there as well, and literally a mop. And that is all the storage that we've got. You have seen outside, obviously. That is the deck in there, if you want to see. It is absolutely wild wind today and rain, so we're not going to go outside, but you can show the um, deck in if you like. It's just very, very windy, rainy. It is quite a large deck in. It is big enough for us to have a hot tub, but as Lee said earlier on in this vlog, the wind basically would spoil it, no matter, even if it's summer, and we, we would just never use it. I and mean, we've got the ability to use a hot tub on site and we rarely use that as well. So there you go, we've just done the tour and that's what we think are the pros and cons and what you should think about before you buy a lodge. You may have loads of different questions, 
please feel free to drop us a comment below with any questions you've got. If you are thinking about moving on to a lodge park, we know some of our friends are, they've been you know, messaging us for, for the last year before. It is a big pandemic. decision, um, but obviously now with a lot of people doing staycations, a lot of people yeah. now are looking at it, so prices have tend to, like anything coming out of lockdown, t prices tend to have skyrocketed. Yeah. So there you go, drop us a comment below with any questions that you've got and we will try to answer them. We've obviously done this now for four years, so we're, we're pretty used to it now. This is our life. Um, our main home obviously is off park. Again, you've, if you're new here, check out our other videos. We've just done an apartment up, which we actually going to do tomorrow. And um, that is the our main up. home, yeah. So check out all those videos we moved in last year. So if you are new to our channel and you're not already subscribed, click the subscribe button. Click that little bell at the side of it, which will tell you when we do a new video. We do four videos a week. Um, as Lee said, drop us a comment. We read all comments. Uh, give the video, if you like it, a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs down if you don't like it. If you um, like these kind of videos, please let us know. If there's anything you want to know about Lodge Life, if you know there's anything we haven't shown, um, you know, we live here. 90% of the time, so we can show you whatever you guys kind of want to see. Yep. And we'll see you on the next vlog. Bye for now.